Hey guys, what's up? So um, this video, what we want to look at is Babel. And Babel is a relatively complex subject, I think, for a lot of people, including myself when I was first getting started using it. In fact, for the longest time, I had a hard time understanding exactly what Babel or Babel was doing for me. In fact, I called it Babel for the longest time, and I still do, because for whatever reason, I just, I, I see that word and I think Babel. I don't, I'm not a religious guy. I don't know anything about the Tower of Babel or anything like that, but Anyway, what Babel does for us, guys, is it allows us to write modern JavaScript that works in older browsers. And the latest version of JavaScript is ES6, also known as ECMAScript 2015. JavaScript is really just ECMAScript. It's the standard. ECMAScript is the specification, which is like, you know, basically the dictionary or the Bible of what JavaScript is. And browsers implement those specifications to the best of their abilities. However, they always trip up and they do things differently. So Chrome renders a little bit differently from Mozilla. Mozilla and, and, and I Internet Explorer never gets things right. They're always lagging behind the other two. Um, Chrome is, in my opinion, the best browser out there, especially for debugging. And then you have Mozilla would be a second place. And then you have uh, IE and a distant third behind, uh, fourth actually behind Safari probably. Um, so... The, the fact of the matter is, is though that Babel will allow you to write code in a way that will work in the older browsers. And that's really important when we start looking at the latest standards and how do we actually write modern JavaScript right now. So the ECMAScript 2015 standard is right here. It actually got finalized in December of last year. And, and so far, Chrome is the, uh, the closest to being able to render a lot of this stuff. But even some of the stuff that's supported is actually not 100% supported compared to the, um, you know, what the specification calls for. So if you really want some dry reading and you want to be, um, you know, a super JavaScript nerd, then, this, you know, it might be a good idea to check out the specification. But if you're, if it, if you're like me, um, and I've been programming for about seven years in JavaScript uh, for about that whole entire time, uh, I'm not a JavaScript like expert to the point where like I, I feel like I can just crush that specification and understand everything it's talking about. Um, to me, it takes trial and error. And also, I, I don't really need to understand that entire specification. It was designed by hundreds of developers and many different companies all coming together to come up with these standards. And even if you understood those standards 100%, it doesn't mean that the browser actually works and renders that JavaScript according to that specification. So the answer, though, at least as close to the answer as possible right now is that everybody's using Babel to compile their JavaScript. So let's go ahead and look at how do we actually get Babel installed in order to be able to use some of the latest standards like arrow functions, and uh, which is an ES6 standard that Babel will then compile into an ES5 uh, version so that way you can write this modern code and, and get it working. So number one, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to open up a new window for my Visual Studio Code. If you've ever watched my tutorials in the past, you know that I've been using Visual Studio Code lately. Um, it's a really good product from Microsoft, believe it or not. That uh, is, uh, It's just a really good editor. It's very simple. It, it doesn't try to do too much. Um, so with this editor here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a, a project folder so that we can uh, talk about this. And I, I'm going to put everything under my, uh, my projects uh, directory under my C drive. So that's here. And then I wanna, I'm going to have a tutorials folder down here. And so click on that. And then we'll go ahead and create a folder here, which we'll call Babel or Babel Tutorial. And then inside here, I'm going to open up this folder, press CMD inside my Windows Explorer. I'm using Windows 10, but this should be the same for anything Windows 7 and beyond. So here we are on the command line. The first things uh, that you want to do when you build a modern JavaScript project, especially using something like Babel, is you want to make sure that you have Node installed in your machine because Node is going to install your NPM, which is a package manager that everybody's using for JavaScript. So if you haven't heard of it and you do JavaScript development, um, you're either brand new or you've been living under a rock. Uh, but NPM is a package manager, and if you just install Node.js for your machine, whether it's Linux, Mac, or whatever, you're going to have Node uh, and NPM working. So by typing NPM init, it's going to create a standard JSON config file. So that's what all the web development 
you know, people are doing nowadays, they create this config file, which is then responsible for telling the project what type of plugins that you're using and what's a plugin. It just means a, a chunk of code and Babel is a, is, is a chunk of code. So when we install Babel or some other tool, even jQuery or React or something like that, this config will keep track of all of that. Now, one of the things you'll know is that, or you'll notice real quick, is you can't have spaces or capital letters when we're giving this thing a name. So we're just going to call this Babel or Babel tutorial with the underscore for the space and make it all lowercase. And we could say it's version one. That's fine. We'll say a Babel tutorial by Chris Hawks. And we'll make the entry point index.js. That's fine. It's that by default, so I can just press enter. Test command, don't worry about it. Get repository, don't worry about it. Author, I'll just say uh, Chris Hawks. And I'll make it MIT, I don't care. All right, so now we have this package JSON file. And if we open up, a lot of people pronounce it JSON. I've always said JSON. I don't think it really matters. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, open the folder for this project that we created. So Babel tutorial, we'll select that folder. And by doing that, Visual Studio will now open up this folder and you'll be able to see the documents on the left-hand side once this thing actually starts working. What the hell is going on? Oh, I see. I sees that. Um, so hold on a second. Let's go to uh, Tutorials. All right, there we go. All right, so here's our package uh, JSON file, and I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see it. And that's all the information that we just entered in. So now when we install things, it's going to install them and add them uh, to a local node modules folder. And then we can then access, um, you know, the version that we installed from our package config. So let me go ahead and explain what we're going to do here. We're going to install Babel. Now, Babel has a few different plugins. Um, that people are using. There's Babel CLI, which stands for Command Line Interface. Uh, there's also Babel Core and then um, Babel ES2015 something or another. Um, and I don't even remember what, the, oh, it's called Babel Preset ES2015. So enough with the, the bull crap. Let's go ahead and talk about this here. Let's, uh, let's npm install and we're gonna say Babel core and then space and then we're going to add um, we'll install the Babel preset ES 2015 now what Bab Babel preset 2015 does is it's actually the module for Babel that says hey I'm going to take your ES 6 and I'm going to compile it to ES 2015 so in order for that to actually happen you have to have that package installed and that's what we're doing right now now, another argument I'm going to do after that Babel preset ES2015, I did a space, I'm going to do two hyphens, and I'm going to say save hyphen dev. And this just means that these tools are for the development of this project. So if I go to distribute this project somewhere else, these tools aren't necessary for a project that uses my project to have to download because it's only used for the development of this project. So that is the difference between hyphen hyphen save and hyphen hyphen save dev because if you know that you don't need this package to be part of your application then then make it you know part of save dev uh, but if it's a requirement that this package is installed in order for your stuff to work then yes you would put it under hyphen hyphen save now let's take a look at what happened uh, to the package uh, Jason you can see these two pra uh, these two entries were created under dev dependencies. So not under normal dependencies, but dev dependencies. And you can see Babel Core and Babel Preset ES 2015. So now that that is being done, uh, what we want to do, and I want to explain and harp on this because this is something that a lot of people don't really understand. When you're using modern Babel development, you want to actually have everything installed locally and not globally. So globally means that if you install things without saying hyphen hyphen save, it's actually going to install them in your global node modules folder instead of the node modules folder from where you executed the command. So long story short, you don't want to share node modules with other projects because node modules may be updated and all of a sudden because you're referencing the same folder for eight different projects, you could have eight projects completely screwed up over one simple 
you know, mess up of an update uh, or, you know, or, or, you know, just deleting a, uh, a dependency. So don't do that. You do everything locally. And if you just follow along with this tutorial for all your development needs, then you're going to understand this is a, an easier way of doing things. Um, so here's this node modules folder. And look at all this crap that got installed with Babel. Babel is actually a pretty huge project, and it requires all this crap. Um, that it went out and installed for you when you said that you needed to install it. So that's another reason why you want this under dev dependencies and not an actual dependency because then otherwise projects that use your project are going to download all that crap and, and they won't even use it. So um, they're going to be like, why am I downloading 16 meg of data for this crappy project by Chris Hawks? I'm not going to use it. And then I'm not going to get rich and I'm not going to make any money off this tutorial or any of my websites or anything like that. So it's just a bad idea. Now, Let's go ahead and look at what we need to do in order to be able to then execute Babel locally. And what do I mean by that? It means that Babel, by default, is going to try to find your global installation. So right now, Babel is only installed locally. So in order for us to be able to, to run the local Babel version, we need to go ahead and add to our scripts here. And we're going to say in double quotes, we're just going to say Babel. And then same thing here, Babel. And make sure there's a comma there because this is the first argument, this is the second. So now we have this Babel. Now if we go to our command line and we say npm run Babel, what it's doing is it's actually going to execute this script. And it says, oh, look for Babel. And it's going to look into the local node modules folder for Babel. So it's not going to run it globally, which is good. Now you can see here that we get an error and it says Babel is not recognized. And the reason why is we actually need... Um, we need to actually pass an argument and we need the Babel CLI tools as well. So let's go ahead and add the uh, install for a Babel CLI tool. So same thing, npm install uh, Babel CLI. And once again, this is going to be a dev, uh, save dev for dev dependency. All right, so now that that's installed, let's go ahead and um, run this again, npm run babel. Now, because the command line was actually installed, you can see that it actually knows what you're trying to do. You're trying to run babel from your command line. That's what we need this project for. Now, it's going to hang because it doesn't know what you want to do. So press Control c and, pre and press Y. We need to go ahead and uh, tell babel to work a little bit differently. We need to, number one, we need an index.js file because you can see here that this is uh, this package it says your main starting point of your application should be index.js so let's go ahead and create that now so in our folder we can press new file and say index.js now inside here I'm just going to go ahead and create a um, what's considered the uh, it's called the arrow function in ES6 and this is something that Babel will compile to ES2015 if we do everything right. So what we'll say is we'll say var x equals, and then it's just an anonymous function, uh, arrow function that is just going to return alert, hello world. So this is an arrow function. This is only um, you know modern ES6 that, that supports uh, this arrow function here. So let's go ahead and now we want to tell Babel I want you to compile this index crap and make a, a separate out file that we're just going to call bundle. And let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to say npm run babel. Now one of the interesting things to note is that we need to say two hyphens in order to pass arguments to our locally running babel. So now we can actually say, you know what babel? I want you to compile index.js and I want you to say your out file, which is going to be hyphen O, is going to be bundle.js. So now by using these two hyphens, we're actually passing arguments to our local Babel installation. Now, if you look at what happened here, we went ahead and it actually compiled this bundle.js. Now, one of the interesting things to note is that it did not actually convert it to ES 2015, uh, or I'm sorry, ES, uh, ES5, older versions before 2015. The reason why is because we actually need to tell Babel to use a preset. And in order to do that, um, 
we need to actually create something called a Babel RC file. So we're gonna say add new file, and it's gonna be just called Babel RC. Um, I'm sorry, and you need to say dot Babel RC. So I know that's really weird. And then here is just gonna be a simple uh, J JSON object, and we're gonna say presets. And this is gonna be a list of different presets. And we're gonna say ES2015. If you remember though, we've already installed the ES2015 preset that Babel needs. And that's what we did earlier in this video. So now we're telling Babel, and it's going to look for this Babel RC file anytime you execute um, to say, oh, okay, here's all the presets that are available. But we need to do something in addition for that to actually work. We need to actually pass the preset argument to our argument, so another two hyphens after our first hyphen, because remember these first two hyphens tell it to pass arguments to our scripts. I know this is confusing, but eventually it'll make sense, but we're passing arguments to this statement right here by using the first two hyphens. And then anything following the first two hyphens are the actual arguments that we're passing. So the next two hyphens, we're gonna say preset, um, preset ES2015. It might be presets, I don't remember. Looks like that might have been right. All right, good. Um, so now, if we look at what happened here, I actually guessed on preset instead of presets, I didn't remember. But anyway, I know what I'm talking about. I just didn't know the exact uh, spelling. Anyway, here is a bundle. It turns out I was right, so I guess I'm great. Uh, this use strict, this is what Babel is actually doing. It says, oh, you know, this is part of the ES, uh, ES5 standard. We're going to use strict. Uh, that way it doesn't allow undeclared variables and things like that. Uh, var x gets turned from an arrow function to more a traditional function, which this is just a function named x, and it returns hello world. So let's go ahead and create a uh, uh, standard index.html page. And inside of our HTML page, we're just going to do our simple html and we'll do our head head and then here we'll do our body and i'll do a statement all right um so that's just to make sure that things are working so it's not just an empty page and then we'll close off the html so that's all we need now we need to include our actual um, bundle JS. So I'm gonna drag that. Oh, I can't drag it, damn it. I could do that in Visual Studio. So now I need to actually do it the hard way. Script, and we're gonna say source equals forward, uh, dot forward slash bundle, bundle.js and script. All right, so there we go. And now that we've done that, we can open up our folder and we can double click on index. And if you have your browser's default, here's the page. And let's view the page source, make sure, I'm not the page source, but inspect element, right click and stay inspect. Go to console, I just wanna make sure there's no 404 error. That means that um, our JavaScript is being executed. So if I set X, you can see it's actually returning the function and this is the old school function, not the arrow one. So if I called it as a function, you can see it, says hello world. So um, that is how we use Babel in a modern day web project in order to run everything locally and then be able to take modern day ES6 and compile it down to a working uh, ES5 version. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a tutorial series on ES6 uh, because I've been dealing with it quite a bit. And it's going to be posted on hipstercode.com. So um, some of the tutorials I have on here are actually outdated um, in some sense that I want to actually do some some updates here. Some of these tutorials are pretty decent, like my Flask has gotten some good reviews as well as uh, this Python for Beginners tutorial. Um, getting Webpack working and all that stuff with Babel is going to be a separate video here, but uh, I want to make sure that, uh, well, I'm going to be posting an ES6 tutorial on this, uh, this website here, so make sure you guys uh, check that out for all the latest tutorials from me. Uh, and other videos and blogs and things like that. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And uh, once again, I'll go ahead and make another video for how to actually configure Webpack with Babel in order to do exactly what we were doing before, but except get module bundling and, and things like that that we're going to need to deal with uh, in order for you know even more 
more flexibility when it comes to modern day complicated JavaScript applications. All right, guys, thanks for watching and take care. Hey guys, so I've talked about this a lot. Uh, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, they are my sponsor. They're one of the reasons why I'm able to do these videos. And uh, they offer a 12 week intensive course that teaches you the technologies of the here and now. They're gonna focus on a lot of things that are actually being used in websites. Uh, things like jQuery and they're gonna be using stacks like Node.js. The 12 week intensive course is to try to get people in the job market. So that is their entire focus. We've, all, we've talked a lot about on this channel whether or not a college degree is worth it. I'm not the one to be able to answer that question for you. I absolutely think that college degrees are great, especially in computer science. I never wanna convince somebody to say that they shouldn't do that. Um, you know, obviously schools like Stanford and MIT, I, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in envy of all those uh, graduates. However, there is, you know, the bulk of developers that don't necessarily need to be the MIT graduates to actually have success in the programming world. I think I speak relatively uh, well for, for that type of person. And with coding boot camps, we're seeing them, um, you know, try to offer more uh, skills, more modern day skills, because a lot of times when you're going to a computer science course in a major university, you're learning technology that's already outdated by the time you're learning it. With Dev Mountain and coding boot camps like what Dev Mountain offers, they're focusing on really what is hot right now. So, and they also focus on a relatively, um, you know, small set of skills in, in order to make sure that that they are teaching you what you need to know in order to be productive in a in a workplace environment. So. Make sure you guys uh, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, check out the link in the, in the description tab below for more on Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Thanks, guys. Bye.